Now, good morning, students. Now, today I am in front of you. I will have a discussion on this poem, Fire and Ice, by Robert Frost. This is included in your syllabus this year. Now, all of you are class 10 students. Robert Frost does not need any introduction to you. Let's straight away get to the point, the poem. First of all, I talk about the inspiration from where Robert Frost got the inspiration to write about this poem. We have to go back to history. Probably this fire and ice, you know fire and ice, literal meaning you people know fire, something that burns, ice, it's water when water freezes, it becomes ice. These are the literal meaning. But here in this poem, fire stands for the human passions, lust, greed, desire, avarice, where I stands for hatredness, rigidity, insensitivity. Now the inspiration from where Robert Frost got, we, according to the history, if we turn the pages of literature backwards, we find that he had got an inspiration from a divine committee of the 14th century called Dante's Inferno, Canto 32. It is a divine comedy about hell, about hell. Probably Frost has got this inspiration from it. Another part is that Frost has a discussion with a great astronomer of his time, Harlow Shapley, where he discussed with Shapley about the probable destruction of the earth. Someday might the sun may explode or this earth may be submerged under water. Taking inspiration from these two theories, Frost wrote this poem. It is a nine-line single stanza poem. I am breaking it into part one. It is a nine-line single stanza poem written in, I am talking about the prosody of the poem, written in iambic tetrameter with diameter. And you know, Frost probably borrowed the rhyming scheme here is the terza rima, it's a Latin word, in the tercet style. He borrowed it from the Dante's Inferno, where the second line tallies with the rhymes with the first and the third line, it's called terza rima. It is written in iambic diameter, tetrameter with diameter, and in the first stanza, you will see there are figures of speech used. Some say the world will. These are all alliterations. And the first two lines he starts in this poem. Some say the world will end in fire. Some say the world will end in us. This some say, perhaps it's a hearsay, based on which Frost has written. The first two lines contradicts, these are anaphora, another figure of speech. In this stanza, part one, the rhyming scheme, if you go to the English literature rhyming scheme, it is ABAA. He says, some say the world will end in fire, some say the world will end in ice. To fire and ice, these two, are symbolic, the symbolic meaning. Fire stands for lust, greed, desire, avarice. All human beings, we carry all these ingredients. We have got inside us. Greed, it leads to lust, 
desire, it leads to more cravings day by day and ultimately it leads to destruction. I am going a little bit out of the context of the poem. You can see the word man killing each other, brothers killing brothers, sisters, everyone fighting, countries are on the quest for conquest. You have seen in history how the dictator Nazi, dictator Hitler, he had a lust for power which resulted in massive destruction of the earth, loss of lives. So this which symbolizes with fire, it might lead to the end of the world one day. One day, according to Frost, the world will be destroyed by fire. Fire symbolizes all these qualities, traits of the human beings. Lust, greed, desire, avarice. This is one theory. In the poem, in this poem, this is the first theory which Frost vouches for. The world will be destroyed by fire. And for that destruction, we human beings are responsible, will be responsible. Now the second theory of Frost is that the world will end in ice. Ice symbolizes human beings' hatredness, insensitivity. Insensitivity means lack of emotions. Hatred, insensitivity, rigidity. It symbolizes all these things. The second theory is that the world will end in, will be destroyed by ice, it will be perished. Now students, I want to tell you one thing here, don't get confused about Frost, these two theories. Frost himself, the poet himself supports this, supports this theory, first theory. He is a supporter, he vouches for this theory. He vouches for this theory. He supports this theory that the world will be destroyed by fire. And his second theory, this is his second theory, the world will be destroyed by, this is the second theory. That means we can ask questions to the teachers, then why sir, Frost doesn't believe in, fully does, does he believe that the world will end in fire? Yes, he absolutely had faith. He is the full supporter of this first theory, but that does not mean that he is antagonizing the second theory. In the second stanza, you can see he had written, if the world had to perish twice, if the world had to perish twice, that the, if the world has to be destroyed twice, has to be destroyed twice. First, he said, it will be destroyed by fire and if the world has to be destroyed the second time, the second time Frost tells us it will be destroyed by ice. It will be destroyed by ice. That means Frost is supporting his own theory. That's why he uses that word in the poem, it will perish twice. Why? If the world is to be destroyed twice, two times, second time, if it needs to be get destroyed, then the second time it will be destroyed by ice. Now these are the two deeper, in deeper meanings in this poem. It's a nine line single stanza poem and the last line is an enzambment, you know, figure of speech, where no punctuation marks are used. The deeper meaning is that we human beings are responsible. Greed, lust, <coughs> desire, on the other hand, hatredness, rigidity, insensitivity, insensitivity to other people's difficulties, insensitivity to understand other human beings' feelings, other human beings' sadness or pain. So the world will end either by fire or by ice. Thank you very much. Okay.